So, and so they are the people who have come up with these new regulations. And it's interesting because one's gut reaction is that this is essentially an establishment organization. I mean, the top establishment organization in the banking scene um, who basically, um, if you like, sort of think the world is entirely fiat currency and uh, would dismiss gold, if you like, as an alternative to the dollar. And furthermore, would be encouraged to do so by the American uh, Fed and uh, the US Treasury. I mean, we've seen this in the past. Um, so, aren't they, you know, isn't the establishment shooting itself in the foot? <laughs> you know, that's the question which really arises from this. Um, but I think the way to look at it is is just imagine you, yourself in the shoes of um, someone given this task in that committee. You will be aware, perhaps more aware than general members of the public, of the shenanigans that go on in the derivatives markets. So I can't see that the PRA has got any alternative. I mean, the reason this really came up was uh, the PRA actually uh, decided to consult the industry and the, the consultations had to be in by the 3rd of May. The LBMA wrote a letter which basically said, <laughs> with the support of the World Gold Council, that, you know, unless you do something about this, we're going to be out of business. I mean, it was almost as blunt as that. Uh, you didn't have to read between the lines, for goodness sake. Um, so, you know, this was this was absolutely clear. And I must admit, um, you know, that sparked my interest in this because I thought, no, hold on a minute. This is very, very serious. So I decided to really look into it, particularly because I'd heard a certain amount of commentary on it. And it seemed to me it's the end of unallocated gold business in London. And high time, too, because it's I mean, you know, the the the, the, um, the LBMA in their letter actually, I think, were um, marginally dishonest in their approach. They described unallocated gold as gold. It's not gold at all. The way it works is very, very simple. Um, you can create a credit to give to your, as a bank, to give to your dealing desk to trade in gold. I mean, it's very, very simple. And you can show it on your balance sheet on either side, if you want, as unallocated gold. So this is not gold. This is money. This is um, currency. Currency, which, please. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Currency. Okay, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going your way on this currency story. Anyway, <laughs> this is currency, credit currency created out of thin air, which just happens to mark to market to the gold price. That's all it is. It's not gold. And it's fundamentally dishonest. And furthermore, the way in which they have approached this, they could have done a slightly different thing. They could have turned around and said, OK, this is not gold. This Honesty may reassert itself and terribly skeptical and jaded that it never does so, it never will. So you honestly judge that, yes, if these uh, provisions play out, we will get a fundamental shift in the landscape of how this, how the metals uh, market is run that will be more based on what really exists rather than all these shenanigans that you've been describing. And you also truly believe that this will play out? Yes, I do. I mean, it's, it's getting to the point. I mean, like everybody else, um, I've become so cynical about uh, the system. Um, I, I'm... I'm with that cynicism entirely, but really looking at this, I'm finding it increasingly difficult to see how this cannot end, as it were. Um, I'm finding it increasingly difficult to see um, how this unallocated gold trading, which is a complete myth, which the committee understands, incidentally, um, how it can continue. It's got to come to an end. And uh, this is the important thing. We've got, um, I, you know, the the whole of the sort of the bank risk thing is actually now so, so important, particularly in the way um, patch, as it were. And they've been using Target 2, the Target 2 settlement system to do this, do that, you know. So what they do is they turn around and they say, uh, OK, um, these non-performing loans will say they're performing so that you can use them as collateral to borrow money from the central bank. That's the way the Banca d'Italia and the Banca, the, and the Spanish central bank have been uh, feeding money into their banking system, taking, 
basically, um, you know, bust collateral uh, um, uh, in exchange. And mm -hmm. so it pushes it into the target two system. So we're looking at a Europe which is already uh, from the regulatory side on a local basis, completely corrupt in the way it behaves. Now, what does that do? What is the real impact of that? Uh, we have a question. This again, it represents many questions. Justin Reynolds says, what will Basel III do to gold and silver prices? Your thoughts on the on how this plays out? Well, I mean, the, 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 the first thing that comes out of this is that a lot of people, particularly um, customers of banks, have gold accounts at the banks. And they have been persuaded to have unallocated gold accounts, which basically means, well, I mean, it's...